Peter van Dijk will uh, uh, remind us of a very important event in the DNS world, namely the KSK rollover. Um, time after time, we're discovering with cryptography that if you don't refresh things uh, every so often, we may run into trouble. And actually, we are in trouble now. So, Peter? Did you just say that this talk is about the KSK role? Is it not about KSK? It is not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good morning. Surprise me. <laughs> All right. Good morning. How many of you host DNS zones on any software? Okay, it's quite a lot. And how many of you run resolvers for a serious number of users? Also quite a lot. Well, it's very good. So, I'll... <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so, let me just go through this real quickly. This should be familiar to all of you. This is the normal... Um, transaction flow between a client, like a mobile phone, a laptop, whatever, and a resolver, a question goes out, an answer comes back. Um, but obviously, on the resolver side, a lot of magic happens. And this magic very basically looks like this. The resolver goes to the root, asks for the name you asked for, etc. Eventually, it goes to google.com, to getexample.com. I'm sorry for this mistake. <laughs> um, this is still a simplified view because many things happen underneath. Um, since 15, 20 years ago, the DNS has been extended into eDNS. Uh, eDNS is a theoretically backwards compatible change to the DNS that allows for bigger response sizes, allows for DNSSEC and other extensions. If you send as a resolver a query with eDNS to an authoritative, you expect an answer back. Uh, the reality today, thanks to bad implementations, firewalls, and middle boxes, is often different. We might get a format error indicating the authoritative did not understand this backwards compatible question. We might get a server failure. Uh, we might even get back the name does not exist. This is a very hard situation to recover from. We asked a valid question. The authoritative said the name does not exist. We just have to believe it. We might get not implemented. An empty answer or, my personal favorite, a timeout. <laughs> this is the worst thing that can happen to a name server because it has a user waiting on it. Now it has to figure out what to do next to quickly, swiftly get an answer for the client. Today, this is what happens. We send a query with eDNS. We get a timeout. This takes one, two, maybe three seconds. We try again without eDNS. This may work. We may, in fact, be talking to a server that does not support eDNS, that gets confused by eDNS, and will respond. Most of the time, this will not work. The server will, in fact, be down. We have now wasted between three and six seconds on a server that is broken, all because some of the servers out there get confused by eDNS. So, in coordination between all the big open source open source DNS resolver vendors, we are changing this behavior starting February 1st, roughly, because we have release schedules to keep to, we have to wait for all of your resolver operators to deploy new versions. If we get a timeout, we have now spent two seconds, we will ignore this server, we won't fall back to non-eDNS, we will try your other server in the hope that that one is up. To prepare for this, make sure that your servers respond validly and quickly to queries with eDNS. There are many ways to respond correctly. Timeout is never one of them. The quickest way to test your servers is to go to the DNS Flag Day website, where we have collected all information on this plan. You just enter your domain name, and you will get a green, an orange, a red, or perhaps a different error. And once you have that, you can always click through to the eDNS compliance tester run by ISC, which will give you many more details. Um, as you see here, the nl.net zone is hosted just fine. Everything is black, which is fine. Uh, you might see some, some red here, even though this one is green. If you see some red here, please do investigate. You might be hurting your performance, and you might be hurting the further development of the DNS by not 
working in accordance to all the standards. Uh, then for bonus points, go to the ENS FIS and also check your domains there. And any errors or warnings you see there may also be hurting your performance. Now, if none of that was convincing enough, there is one other reason to always answer your queries, and that is spoofing. If a resolver sends a query to you, you don't respond. You're giving an attacker many seconds to guess the query ID and send a spoofed re reply, even if you don't care about DNSSEC, even if you don't care about DNS compliance, this in itself should be enough reason for you to run compliance name servers so nobody can spoof your names. That is all. Any questions for Peter? Hey, Jan. Hey, hey, Peter. Thank you, thank you for this. I was actually not aware that there is a the flag DNS day, so thank you for for uh, letting us know. One thing that a little bit confused me. So, if you're an operator, if you're running a network, a big network with lots of users, you keep your resolvers away from the internet behind firewalls, and you usually don't run latest versions. You don't change them, don't fix it in broken. And I'd, I'd, I don't want to, to, to be a, a carrier of a bad news, but do not expect too much people and huge operators to basically upgrade to, and run on the latest versions, um, um, uh, sort of like in, in because this, Resolvers systems sometimes are huge beasts, and you just don't upgrade to the latest version. Basically, never if it's not broken. Yeah, in reality, the flag day for any customer of a big enterprise will be like a year later. But we do have buy-in from Cloudflare, who runs Quad One, okay. and Quad Nine people run Quad Nine. We're still trying to get Google on board. Okay. So there should be some leverage against the site owners to get them to yeah. update and be compliant. But I do agree that the enterprise will be very much behind on this. So we need to put in, we need to think about how to, how to basically let all these people know that, that okay, you're fine with running your huge beast on the, on the uh, 10 years old versions of the re resolver, but now maybe it's time to, to do something. It, we need to think about getting this message spread around a, li a little bit more. Yeah, well, Thank maybe you. ISOC can help. Yep, yeah, well, I can, I can ask internally. Please do. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, has, so I just tested my, one of my, uh, I have just tested one of my zones and it says it does not work. Uh, has any mass scanning of uh, all names or all known names been done to ensure that like this flag day will not ruin everything? The CZNIC people who are also supporting this initiative have scanned the CZ zone and they found, I think, 0.4% would fail. So nice. it's, it's not a lot, but of course it depends on which names are in there. Nice, I'm the 0.4%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morris Miller from SADN, we run .nl. And I uh, also did a quick check and it also, I can't tell you any numbers, precise numbers, but it also looked roughly in this in this size. So roughly around to half percent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you.